Simpson, are you sure you don't want to stay for dinner? Oh, yeah. I'd like to, but I can't. I gotta go keep the streets of Glenlawn safe. <laughs> Saturday night is a very big night for crime. In that case, you ought to stay here because the biggest crime this Saturday night is I don't have a date. <laughs> well, if you get lucky, Nell, stay off the streets, huh? I'm not going to be home for dinner. I'm meeting over at Melody Hamilton's. We're going to have kind of an expectant mother's talk. Well, honey, you can do that here. I mean, why don't you call Melody and you have dinner and do it here? Oh, I think she'd like that. We're going to discuss the pamphlets our doctors gave us on uh, natural childbirth and uh, morning sickness and breastfeeding as opposed to bottle feeding. Here, baby, and... now you go on over and you have a good time. <laughs> You tell Melody and that baby. I said hi. Okay. Yeah, bye-bye. Bye. 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 Oh, Grandpapa, go sit down at the table. Dinner will be on in a jiff. No, no dinner here tonight, Mel. I've got a date with Gloria Bannister. Isn't she the widow with the runaway hormones? <laughs> yeah, but I'm laying down the ground rules tonight. No kissing, no hugging, and no kitschy coo. <laughs> All you're going to get from me is meatloaf. But she's got that waiting for me, too, now. <laughs> Hello, Joey. Night. Hi, Grandpa. Aunt Nell. Joey. Oh. You don't have to dress for dinner. Aunt Nell, I'm not going to be here for dinner. Oh, I forgot. It's Linda Mason's birthday party. Yeah, Timmy's mom is going to come pick me up. Oh, honey, don't look so sad. You're going to have a good time. No, I won't. All Linda wants to do is get mushy. She makes me sick. <laughs> See you later, Aunt Nell. Oh, get away. Don't get so mushy. Hi, Nell. Hi, right, baby. You gonna Hi. stay for dinner? Oh, no. I just came to pick up Sam. Well, what are you doing home? It's Saturday night. Is it Saturday night? I had notice. I've been so busy making this meatloaf that nobody is gonna eat. <laughs> Why don't you call Addie? She has a date with some man. I mean, it, you know, it's just strange. I'm going through one of my dry spells, and, and Addie, bless her heart, she always has a man. She's such a tramp. <laughs> now, I hear the guy she's dating is very nice. It's all relative, honey. I guess my standards are far too high. Oh, and it didn't work out with the sparkless water man, huh? <laughs> Just how long can you talk about mountain spring water, huh? Hey, Katie. Hi. I'll be going now, Nell. Wait, 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 where you going? Movies. We're double dating. I fixed Samantha up with a really cute guy. Ooh, let her find her own dates. Why don't you fix me up? <laughs> Come on, Samantha, just in case she isn't kidding. Who's kidding? Did you know that your front doorbell is out of order? Yes. Well, why don't you have it fixed? Why should I? Nobody's rung my bell in over a month. <laughs> well, turn off the stove and put everything in the freezer. You're going out with me tonight. Addie, I don't want to go out with you and Maynard. No, we're not dating anymore. Oh, Addie, you poor baby. <laughs> you see, now, we're getting married. <laughs> ahead with your girlfriend and pick out your wedding ring. Oh, I'm so happy you came with me, Nell. <laughs> Nell. 
I'm happy for you. <laughs> well, didn't you hear what I said? I'm picking out my wedding ring, my wedding ring. Did man. you hear what I said? I said I'm happy for you. I'm not happy for you. The most <laughs> thrilling moment of my life is going with you to pick out your wedding ring when I haven't had a date in a month. <laughs> well, why are you so upset? You know, you're my closest friend, and I want you to share a very special moment in my life. Addie, wait. Look, when you first told me that you were going to marry Maynard, all right, I, I was jealous, but I'm not anymore. Honey, I'm just worried. I mean, my very best friend is about to marry a man she's only known for a month. Oh, Nell, true love doesn't need more than a month. A desperate woman doesn't need more than a month. <laughs> Excuse me. Be with you in a minute. Hang nail. I don't want it to catch on my new Shetland sweater. <laughs> you want to see some wedding rings. Congratulations, you'll make a beautiful bride. I'm the one who's getting married. So you'll make a beautiful bride. <laughs> uh, may I see a wedding ring, please? Certainly. Pick that one. It's costume. It doesn't matter. I only give the marriage six weeks. <laughs> I don't believe you embarrassing me in a public place. Girl, I was just kidding. I mean, where's your sense of humor? <clears throat> Thank you very much. I think I'll just come back on Monday. Alone. Good. Monday's my day off. <laughs> Well, any time you're ready to apologize, Nell. For what? You know, you were right. You are jealous. It just makes you crazy that I got a guy and you're sitting home staring at a meatloaf. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, I guess we're just about even. I got myself a meatloaf. You got yourself a meatball. <laughs> now you make me miss my elevator. Oh, big deal, so what? Elevators are like men. If you wait long enough, another one will come along. Ah. <laughs> well, don't wait too long, Nell, or you'll be too old to push the button. <laughs> oh, yeah? Oh, yeah? Well, I want you to know that two days after they bury me, I'll still be better at pushing buttons than you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Emergency. Hmm. If this elevator becomes inoperative while you are in it, one, please stay inside the car. <laughs> Two, do not attempt to open or exit through the hatch. Three, push the alarm bell button, office space still available for rent. What? <laughs> Don't panic. And whatever you do, don't move around. The last time this happened, a lady moved around too much and plunged 15 floors to the basement. <laughs> Shut up and don't move. 
The last time this happened, a lady fell 15 floors to the basement. Now get off the phone so I can call the operator. Now I'll make the call. In a situation like this, you'll only get hysterical and the operator won't even know what you're talking about. Who you calling hysterical? You! Addie, I am at my best in a crisis. In a crisis, I am at my best. No, Addie, this is obviously an omen. What do you mean this is an omen? If I hadn't have been with you picking out your stupid wedding ring, I wouldn't be caught in this elevator in this doggone building. I tell you, girl, the Lord don't want you to marry that man. <laughs> the Lord is much too busy to care whether or not I marry Maynard. If we fall 15 floors to the basement, we can both ask the Lord face to face. <laughs> Uh, 13. 13, 13. What I tell you, mine is lucky seven. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, operator. Look, I'm stuck in the elevator uh, on the 15th floor. Well, oh, I don't want an outside line. <laughs> Look, operator. A man yelled down to us to stay calm and not to panic. Now, what I want to know from you is how long I have to wait before I can panic. Because, <laughs> baby, I'm going to panic. <laughs> sure. Yeah, you can call me back. My extension is, you got a pencil? <laughs> okay, my number is Lucky 7. Bye. Addie? Yes, Nell? Okay. The operator's going to call me back. Oh, good. Uh, let's, let's think about something else. Okay, honey. Just think pleasant thoughts. Right. Pleasant thoughts. Where do you think I should hold a wedding reception? Addie, but can I ask you something? Yeah? Why would you want to marry a man who wears a rug? <laughs> now, there is nothing wrong with a man who wears a toupee. Addie. You're missing the point. Look, honey, I don't care if the man is as bald as a bowling ball. <laughs> the point is, he didn't tell you that when you met him. Oh, now, what was he supposed to say? Hi, I'm Maynard St. John. I wear a rug. <laughs> what was wrong with that? Oh, Nell. Oh, Addie, don't you see? If he was hiding that, what else is he hiding? Have you ever looked under that rug? <laughs> Nell. I have never hung up on anyone in an elevator before, but I'm gonna do it now. <laughs> Addie. Yes, no. Just feel that? Yes. Oh, no, I am so scared. Oh, Addie. Look, I shouldn't have said anything about Maynard. I mean, the Lord is punishing me. <laughs> Why did my elevator move? No, well, I guess because you're such a good friend, you're in trouble, too. I tell you, Addie, I'm no good. <laughs> Nell, that is not yes, true. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. The way I treat you is despicable, unspeakable, unforgivable. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> music each other for comfort. Come to think of it, we would be if I hadn't gotten angry with you. Oh, but you, honey, you had a perfect right. I mean, I don't even know Maynard that well. I don't even know what kind of business he's in. 
Oh, he works in silicon. That's good, baby. Your body could use a lot of help. <laughs> Nell, I said he works in silicon, not silicone. Oh, that's too bad. But it sounds like he's doing well. Well, he does okay, except he has alimony payments to meet every month. That's why I'm paying for my own wedding ring. Wait, wait, wait. You were paying for your own wedding ring? No, it's no big deal. I'm glad to help out. In fact, it's only right that a woman help out a man who's paying alimony. How much is it? Well, it's not actually one big lump sum. It's three separate checks to his ex-wives. How many? There's nothing wrong with a man who's been married a couple of times. Three, Addie. A couple is two. <laughs> well, it doesn't make him less of a person. It just so happens that he never found the right woman until he met me. I can believe that. A man would have to search an awfully long time before he can find a woman with a PhD who's dumb enough to buy your own wedding ring. <laughs> now, if you knew him better, you would know that he is kind, he is considerate, he's a wonderful father, he is thoughtful. Whoa, 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 whoa. back up, back up, back up, back up. The man has a kid. Well, well, well. Does he have more than a kid? A couple. Two? Okay, five. Five kids, three wives. Now, I don't mind a ready-made family. You know I've always wanted to be a mother. Addie, with two kids, you a mother. With five, you a shepherd. <laughs> well, if we don't get out of here, it won't matter anyway. I'm gonna miss you now. What do you mean you're gonna miss me? I'm going with you. I'm not sure we're going to the same place. <laughs> Mel, my elevator just slipped again. Mine too. Well, oh, Mel, I just know they're never gonna get us out of here alive. Hey, stop it! Now look, you've just got to have faith, okay? On the other hand, a good strong chain would come in handy too. <laughs> I'm gonna miss so many things in this life that I love. Me too. What are you gonna miss the most? Breathing. <laughs> I'm gonna miss walking on the beach. I'm gonna miss my family. I'm gonna miss Rocky Road ice cream. <laughs> I'm gonna miss Dynasty. Shoot! <laughs> now I'll never know if Blake and Crystal work out all their problems. <laughs> I wish I knew the real story on Klaus von Bülow. <laughs> oh, I wish I knew how the Iraq-Iran war turned out. I've been following that, you know. <laughs> oh, Nell, it just seems so unfair. <laughs> Nell! Now, do you hear what they're playing? Oh, does that bring back memories? Sure does. You know, the first time I heard... Addie, we were at your house. <gasps> oh, that's... Oh, now remember? We were sitting on my bedroom floor, getting ready for our first high school dance. I had a date and you didn't. Ah! <laughs> but when we left that dance, I had a date and you didn't. Oh. <laughs> You send me. No. I know that you, you send me, darling. You send me. Honest, you do. Honest, you do. Honest, you do. Whoa, 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 whoa. You thrill me. You know, and we have had some great times. Oh, Nell, the greatest. Do you remember Bobby Hutchins? Do you remember George Kronicki? <gasps> oh, oh, he girl. was fine. Oh, get back. <laughs> <laughs> At first, I thought it was infatuation. But, but oh, it's lasted so long. long. Now I find myself wanting you. I 
happen to marry you and take you home. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You send me. I know that you send me. Darling, you send me. Honest, you too. Honest, you too. Hey, Addie. What now? You know, I was really kind of rough on you, you know, about your marrying a Maynard and all. And he really does sound like a sensitive guy. I mean, five kids and three wives, he obviously likes people. <laughs> I guess the important thing is that you love him. You know, I was thinking, why don't you call Maynard and, you know, tell him goodbye? I mean, just in case. I'm sure he loves you, too. Oh, Nell, that's so sweet. I think I will call him. <clears throat> Operator, could I have an outside line? Yes, it's a local call. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, can I speak to Maynard, please? He's in the shower? Well, who is this? Huh? His fiance. Whoa. Well, when Maynard dries himself off, you tell him his other fiance called and then throw his butt back in the shower. <laughs> Nell? Oh. So, how did Maynard take it? Oh, he got hysterical. The thought of losing me was just too much for him. Yeah, just goes to show you. You're lucky, Yada. He really does love you. I guess he is a sensitive guy. He's a creep! What do you mean calling that sensitive guy a creep? <laughs> well, he was in the shower and his fiance answered the phone. What I tell you? What I tell you? <laughs> Five kids, three wives. What's two fiances, honey? I knew it all along. Huh? Well, I'm glad I'm not marrying him. You know, he always showers with his rug on, and I hate the smell of wet wool. <laughs> Just glad you found it out for what he was before you made that terrible mistake. And you know what, Addie? When we get out of here tonight, and I know we are, because we're going to get out alive, I am going to take you to dinner at the fanciest restaurant in town. You want to know why? I said, do you want to know why? <laughs> yeah, why? Because this brush with death has taught me how important you are to me. Oh, no, you are a wonderful friend, and I'd love to go out to dinner with you tonight. This is the fire department. We're coming down. Addie, Addie, it's the fire department. I think we've been safe. I'll call oh. you back. Okay. Wow. Oh. <laughs> well, I just, I, well, right there, just a little. <laughs> I'm sure your wife must worry with you doing such dangerous work. I'm not married. Catch me, I'm Get to the phone over there. Thank you. I got it now. OK, Charlie. And, oh, now, about dinner tonight. Yeah? Some came up. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, you've just witnessed the 100th performance of Give Me a Break. Five glorious years.